Welcome to our second lesson about applying constraints. Let's create a new assembly document. And now let's bring in our components. We'll just drag them right in from Windows Explorer. As you can see from the pin icon in the browser tree, the base is grounded. Let's apply some constraints now. Let me just organize my components. OK, activate the constrain command. Let's use the mate constraint type. Select this face and this face. Click Apply. Now let's apply a tangent constraint. Select this cylindrical face and this one. The tangent constraint offers an outside or inside solution. Let's use the outside solution. Click Apply. Now Cylinder 1 goes around the cylindrical segment of the base. Let's expand Cylinder 1. Let's double click the tangent constraint. We'll offset it by an eighth of an inch, 0.125. Accept. And let's test it again. As you can see, the mate is offset a little bit. Let's constrain the red cylinder now. Constrain. Type will be mate. Let's select this face and this face. We need the flush solution. Apply. And activate the tool again. This time we need a tangent mate. Select this face and this face. Now we'll use the inside solution. Let's apply and cancel out of the tool and test it out a bit. OK, let's move on to another model. I've got a dial in my graphic area. It's got one degree of freedom. It rotates, as you can see here. I'm going to position the dial at about 45 degrees. Now let's activate the constraint command. Let's use an angle mate. Solution type will be a directed angle. This checkbox here is the predict offset and orientation option. Let's leave that checked. This option basically sets your angle. Let's uncheck it. And notice in the angle field, I see zero degrees. Let's check it again. Selections, let's make our first selection. Notice that when I move the mouse, I see the vector orientation. Let's select this edge. And this edge here. Just in case you selected the wrong edge, and let's say your part reorients unexpectedly, what you can do is cancel out of the tool, and then reactivate it and begin your selections again. Let's use the directed angle option. Ensure that predict offset and orientation is checked. Now let's select this edge and this edge here. And you see the current angle registers in the angle field of the dialog window, 42.81 degrees. Let's apply and cancel out of the tool. We're ready to right click on our angle constraint and select Drive Constraint. The dialog window shows the start and end angles of the constraint. Let's change the end angle, let's say, to 225 degrees. Now we set the pause delay. That's the delay between steps. By default, it's at a hundredth of a second, even though we see zero here. Let's click the play button now. As you see, our dial moves. And when it reaches 225 degrees, it stops. Note the end angle displayed in the title bar. We're able to play our drive in reverse by clicking this button. The degrees are displayed in the title bar. And we're back to our original position, 42.81. We can step forward by clicking this icon and step reverse by clicking here. Here's the minimum position and the maximum position. We also have the option to create a movie of our drive. We can select from two different formats, Windows Media Video or WMV, or an AVI file. Let's select the WMV format. Click Save. Inventor asks us to specify some extra settings. Let's cancel out of this window. And let's try that again. We'll choose AVI this time. Inventor asks us to specify the video codec. If you happen to be sending this video to your client or colleagues, be sure that they've got the same codec, or they won't be able to see your video. 
Let's cancel out of the video compression dialog window. Yes, that's okay too. Cancel out of the drive constraint dialog window as well. And let's right click on our constraint, edit. Here I can switch from a directed angle to an undirected angle. Okay. Basically what this option does is flip the angle direction. Let's demonstrate. Right click on angle one, drive constraint. I've got the same settings here. The start is 42 degrees and the end is 225. Let's click play forward. When the dial reaches 180 degrees, the angle direction flips. In the graphic area, the dial starts moving in the opposite direction. However, the angular value that we see displayed in the title bar is still 225 degrees. Let's play it in reverse now. Note what happens when the dial reaches 180. It reverses direction and continues the angular movement. It reaches 42.81 degrees and stops. Let's cancel out of the Drive Constraint dialog window. This concludes our second lesson about placing constraints within your assembly.